Hello, and welcome to episode 56 of the Bible Q&A with Pastor Stephen. My name is Stephen Pace, and I'm the senior pastor at Decatur Bible Church in Decatur, Michigan. On this podcast, I attempt to answer your Bible-related questions in both a clear but also thorough manner. If you would like to have a Bible-related question considered for a future episode, you can email me your question to pastor s-t-e-v-e-n-d-b-c at gmail.com and I'll be glad to consider your question for a future episode. Now in this episode we're going to be looking at a particular Bible question along with a proverb. So grab your Bibles and let's get started. Now on this particular episode we're going to be looking at a question or topic that I was recently asked about and it is what is or what does inspiration of the Bible mean? This came about uh, because of a sermon that I did recently in our series in the Gospel of Mark and when we finished Mark chapter 16 I discussed briefly the idea of inspiration of the scripture and was asked to elaborate on what is meant by inspiration regarding the Bible. And so on this episode, I'm going to look at what does inspiration mean. Uh, We'll stop for a second and look at a particular proverb related to the scriptures. And then we'll finish up at looking at human and God as the author, uh, as well as a few other scriptures that will help kind of clarify the idea of inspiration. Now, but let's begin with what are we talking about and uh, a general definition or two I'll give. But again, the topic we're going to start with is what does inspiration mean, inspiration of the Bible. This is an area that we would call the doctrine of the Bible or bibliology. If you think of ology as the study of something and whatever precedes ology is what you're studying or the topic at hand. So, Bibli, a Bible, ology, the study of the Bible. Uh, you can think of angelology. Angelology is the study of angels. So, this is where this falls into uh, this meaning inspiration. Uh, you have inspiration, inerrancy, and so forth. These are all topics related to the Bible. Now, the Bible, of course, is unlike any fiction or non fiction books that you might read. Uh, The Bible is different in many ways. One of those is the way in which it came about. One of the unique features of the Bible itself is that it was inspired by God and not by human authors. And uh, that is one of the main principles to grasp regarding inspiration, which is that it is that God inspired human authors to write what we actually have in the 66 books. Uh, Let me read two definitions so we can get a general flavor of what is meant by this. The first one I'm going to read is from Ryrie's Basic Theology. That's a good one to have if you don't. um, He does a good job of concisely covering the majority of doctrines that you'll encounter. But for inspiration, Ryrie writes, quote, God superintended or carried along the human authors of the Bible so that they composed and recorded without error his message to mankind in the words of their original writings. And that again comes from Ryrie's basic theology. I'm going to read another definition. This comes from Stephen Waterhouse's book, An Outlined Guide to Bible Doctrine. And uh, he refers to this book as Not by Bread Alone. This is a really good book on doctrine where, and it does essentially what the subheading or subsubject title is of the book, is it outlines in an outline format uh, the doctrines of the Bible. So sort of in Roman numerals, it goes through. Uh, so it's really helpful. But, it, but uh, Dr. Waterhouse's definition is, quote, inspiration is God superintending the production of the scriptures so that they were produced without error in the original manuscripts. Inspiration means the Bible is God-breathed, i.e. 
it is a work of God, a creation of God, and a divine product, meaning of God. So very similar uh, to Ryrie's, but of course it's always good to get two definitions. I think it gives a more full picture. So as Waterhouse describes, very similar uh, that the Bible is sourced or its source is found with God, which means, of course, it, it does not have any errors in it. Uh, it's God-breathed. Thus, I like his way of putting this. It is a work of God, a creation of God, thus a divine product. And uh, that's a good way to put inspiration. Now, when we look at inspiration regarding the Bible, there are several views of how the Bible came about. This would be what you call views of inspiration. Now you might be thinking, what do you mean by that? Well, some suggest that God simply told an individual, we'll say Paul for argument's sake, and Paul just dictated what God said. So in other words, God dictated to Paul, and Paul just wrote verbatim and word for word. So that's sort of the idea of the dictation theory. Uh, then the other one is that it's a collection of concepts of God. So these are just sort of concepts that God gives, and um, rather than actually a verbal or inspired source, word by word, so some, again, suggest that God simply dictated to someone. Uh, another word, another view is that he gave concepts. And so man essentially just wrote the concepts out. Now, I don't hold to either of these. I prefer the view that, as I just read those definitions, that God inspired men to write what he intended. So what I mean by that is that I hold to the view that there is human authorship, but also God, of course, involved. So this would be the idea of dual authorship. And that is a fancy way, you might say, of saying that God inspired, we'll use Paul, for example, Paul to write what he intended Paul to write. He inspired him by the Holy Spirit, and we'll see more on this later. But this also helps with the idea that the human author's personality and writing style is present. And so the idea of dual authorship in terms of inspiration is that God inspired, we'll say Paul, for example, or John, or Peter, or Joshua, Moses, whatever the case may be, to write the inspired word of God but the dual authorship view is preferred because we see the humanity, we see the human author's personality and writing style uh, come forth. And I think this is a better concept than the dictation view. The, the conceptual view is one that I definitely don't hold to. The dictation view I understand, but I think it doesn't address the author's personality and writing style. And so all this to say at this point is that inspiration, when we talk about it in terms of the Bible, that God inspired men to write what he intended for them to write, uh, even though the human's author's personality and writing style comes out, it is God-inspired, it is God-breathed out, and thus it is without error. And we'll look at more of that in a few minutes. One way you can see this in terms of the truth of the Bible, and since it comes from God, we can trust the Bible. For example, Psalm 119, verse 160, the entirety of your word is truth. And this is a very simple way to think of inspiration, I think, is this verse. If man wrote it, the entirety of it couldn't be true because man has flaws and shortcomings. If the source is God and God is perfect, then, of course, it can be not only without error, that all of it can be true. And we all today are looking for a source of truth. Well, you don't have to look any further. You can look to the scriptures because God breathed them out. They come from him as the source, and thus they are all true. So as we're going to see later, the human authors wrote as they were guided by the Holy Spirit to record what God intended. And so what we'll find is they are without error, and thus, since they come from God and they are without error, they can be trusted. 
and they can be relied upon, especially in a world of so much misinformation and lack of truth. Now before we go any further, I want us to pause here for a second because I know sometimes with doctrine and theology, um, of course we need to have that knowledge. Uh, it's one of the ways we grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus is through, of course, just that, knowledge and understanding. But uh, let's pause for a minute here and I want us to look at Proverbs chapter 30 in verse 5. So that's Proverbs chapter 30 in verse 5. And I'm just going to read uh, this to you and comment on it briefly. The proverb says, Every word of God is tested. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. It's interesting here as we read this that not just some of the words, but all of the words of God are described as tested or pure or tried, depending on your translation. I like the New King James version of it where it says every word of God is pure. It gives the idea in the Hebrew of something that is tried or something tested. Uh, it's a curious word, in, again, in the Hebrew because it gives the imagery of something that is refined, almost like that as of a goldsmith. God's word has been tested and we can find it to be truthful and trustworthy. Thus, as I said, with inspiration, since it comes from God and God is perfect, we shouldn't expect otherwise. So it's a great verse related to what we're looking at because every word, not just one word here and there, but all of the entirety of Scripture is tested, meaning it's been tested in, through the fire, if you want to put it that way. It's been refined and it's found to be pure, and so we can trust it. The only true God, the God of the Bible, is, of course, the one who is a shield and protector for those who take refuge in him, which is the second part of the verse. And so what you see here is a just a great hopeful verse, an encouraging verse here that God's special revelation to us, the Bible, is trustworthy. It is pure. We know that it has been tried and tested. It has been refined as though through the fire. And it's a source of hope, and it's a source of protection, just as God is himself. And so the next time you wonder, just remember that God's word, every word of it is pure, it's been tested, and it's like gold to the believer, and I pray that it is for you as well. But let's now return back to the main subject at hand today, which is inspiration. And so we've already seen... For all practical purposes, the idea of inspiration. Inspiration, as Ryrie or Waterhouse puts it, is something where God himself inspires, breathes out. So God is the source when we think of inspiration. God inspires the human author. So you think of Peter, Paul, or John, or whoever the case may be. He inspires them to write without error what he intended for them and then again as i like to say i think waterhouse captures this well that it may that this means since it's god breathed that it's a work of god it's a creation of god and thus it's a divine product that we have before us but having said all that let's look at two particular verses that are used from the new testament and they really drive home the point that the human authors were inspired by God, but at the end of the day, I like to think of it as the human author does help us at times to identify who wrote it. We can put it in its context, like with Paul, for instance. But the main idea with inspiration is that the source is God himself. God inspires via the Holy Spirit the human authors. Now, I'm going to give you these couple of verses from Acts. And then we're going to look at the two main verses that teach inspiration. Uh, but you can read these on their own, on your own. They all come from the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1, verse 16. Acts chapter 2, verse 16. Acts chapter 3, verse 18. Acts chapter 4, verse 25. And lastly, Acts chapter 28, verse 25. And those just show you from the book of Acts how the Holy Spirit moved along the authors who 
wrote the scriptures. But let's look at two verses. These are the two main verses that teach the idea of inspiration. It's very clear. Probably familiar with both of them. But the first one is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Paul's last written letter, 2 Timothy 3, 16. And Paul writes, all scripture, this is in the Greek graphe, so this is all the scriptures. Notice, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Verse 17, we see the application of it and the reason. Why is it? Verse 17, so that the man of God may be adequate and equipped for every good work. So that would be the purpose, if you will, verse 17. But verse 16 is our main point. Notice all Scripture. So it's not just a piece of it. It's not a parcel. It's all of the Scripture, very much like Proverbs. Every word, all. But notice Paul says, is inspired. This particular word here, inspired, in the Greek means God breathed. This was the idea that Waterhouse, in particular, gets very well articulated. The scriptures are God-breathed. God is the primary. He is the only source for these. In other words, the ideas, all of it comes from God, and God is inspiring. But I, I love the expression that God breathed out the scriptures. This is why they are a divine product, as Waterhouse stated in the definition. But now let's look at the second uh, one we're going to look at, and this will be our last one for this episode, but it's 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 21. So that's 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. But before we look at it, you'll notice in verse 20 it says, But know this first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. Uh, so the subject matter matter here is, of course, Scripture. And Peter here is delving into the prophetic Scriptures we think of. But for our purposes, notice what he says in verse 21. For no prophecy, in other words, no prophecies that are in the Scripture, were ever made by an act of human will. So then where do they come from? Well, notice what he says. But men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. So this, again, is the idea that the Old Testament scriptures, which is what he's referring to, were not of human or man's origin. In other words, they didn't come up with the idea on their own. They didn't create or originate from man itself. So the question is, well, how in the world did they get them? There's an interesting word there. It says that men were moved. The Greek word for moved is, inter is an interesting word. If you ever heard the clothing nautica, well, this is the Greek word for nautical. That's where it comes from. So it gives the idea of the moving being like the wind that blows a sailboat. That's the way I think of it. And so what Peter is saying is that man didn't come up of and originate the prophetic scriptures on their own, but instead the Holy Spirit moved among them like a sailboat. I, I like to use the example of if you imagine a sailboat and man can try to move the rudder all he wants to, but unless he has the wind blowing, he doesn't go anywhere. And that's what Peter is saying. He says, the Spirit of God moved them like a sailboat to write what is needed. And that's a good description of the Holy Spirit, isn't it? Wind? Well, that's the use that Jesus used in John chapter 3, verse 8 with Nicodemus. If you remember, the Spirit moves basically like the wind. Uh, this is somewhat similar to, I guess, Acts chapter 2 a little bit with Pentecost there. Uh, but John chapter 3 and verse 8 in particular, the Spirit moves like wind. So the idea here is very simply this, and I'm going to read you this when we, as we go to close here. Renald Shower says, Just as the wind blows into the sails of a sailing vessel to move it where it wants to take it, so the Spirit of God was moving the human writers so that they wrote the Word of God. 
And that's about as good of a definition as you're going to get for inspiration. And so the reason we can rely and hope on the Bible is because its source is from God. Because they come from God himself, the very words are breathed out from God. So as we read, for no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but were moved by the Holy Spirit, spoke from God. Though all of those words come from God himself, and thus they can be trusted. And since we can trust in them, we can hope and rely on all of them. And what a great blessing that is. So hopefully in this episode you have a good understanding now of what inspiration is. And if you want to study the subject a little bit more thoroughly, uh, the two books that I would suggest to you, Basic Theology by Charles Ryrie has a good article on it, uh, as well as Stephen Waterhouse's Not by Bread Alone, An Outlined Guide to Bible Doctrine. Uh, both of those serve as good sources there uh, for further study. But as we close, what we need to remember with inspiration is that God inspired the human authors to write without error every single thing we have from Genesis to Revelation, and thus it can be trusted because it comes from God himself. Well, hopefully this helps clarify the idea of inspiration, and until next time, God bless.